Among the Kikuyu of Kenya, it was believed that owls were harbingers of death. If one saw an owl or heard its hoot, someone was going to die. In general, owls are viewed as harbingers of bad luck, ill health, or death. The belief is widespread even today. In Mongolia, the owl is regarded as a benign omen. In one story, Genghis Khan was hiding from enemies in a small coppice when an owl roosted in the tree above him, which caused his pursuers to think no man could be hidden there. In modern Japan, owls are regarded as lucky and are carried in the form of a talisman or charm. Hudam Pianchar Naksha by Kalaprasana Singha, first published in 1861, is a book of social commentaries influential in Bengali literature. The name literally means, sketches by a watching owl. The modern West generally associates owls with wisdom and vigilance. This link goes back at least as far as ancient Greece, where Athens, noted for art and scholarship, and Athena, Athens' patron goddess and the goddess of wisdom, had the owl as a symbol. Maria Gimbutas traces veneration of the owl as a goddess, among other birds, to the culture of old Europe, long pre-dating Indo-European cultures. T. F. The Selton Dyer, in his 1883 Folklore of Shakespeare, says that, from the earliest period it has been considered a bird of ill omen, and Pliny tells us how, on one occasion, even Rome itself underwent a lustration, because one of them strayed into the capital. He represents it also as a funereal bird, a monster of the night, the very abomination of humankind. Virgil describes its death howl from the top of the temple by night, a circumstance introduced as a precursor of Dido's death. Ovid, too, constantly speaks of this bird's presence as an evil omen, and indeed the same notions respecting it may be found among the writings of most of the ancient poets. A list of, omens drear, in John Keats' Hyperion includes the, gloom bird's hated screech. Pliny the Elder reports that owl's eggs were commonly used as a hangover cure. One of the etymologies offered for the name of the German folk hero Till Eulenspiegel is that it means, mirror for owls. In Hinduism, an owl is the Vahana, mount, of the goddess Lakshmi, especially in eastern region of India. Owl is considered a symbol of wealth, prosperity, wisdom, good luck and fortune. This is the reason why Owl is seen with God and Lakshmi, who is also the goddess the fortune, wealth and prosperity. The goddess Lakshmi, is known to have a white barn Owl as her Vahana. At the same time, Owls are also associated with evil times in Hinduism. At times, Chamunda, fearsome form of Khandi, is depicted seated on an Owl, her Vahana, mount or vehicle. Hindus believe that owls are messengers of death. People often allude to the reputation of owls as bearers of supernatural danger when they tell misbehaving children, the owls will get you, and in most Native American folklore, owls are a symbol of death. According to the Apache and Seminole tribes, hearing owls hooting is considered the subject of numerous, boogeyman, stories told to warn children to remain indoors at night or not to cry too much, otherwise the owl may carry them away. In some tribal legends, Owls are associated with spirits of the dead, and the bony circles around an owl's eyes are said to comprise the fingernails of apparitional humans. Sometimes owls are said to carry messages from beyond the grave or deliver supernatural warnings to people who have broken tribal taboos. The Aztecs and the Maya, along with other natives of Mesoamerica, considered the owl a symbol of death and destruction. In fact, the Aztec god of death, Mictlantecuhtli, was often depicted with owls. There is an old saying in Mexico that is still in use, cuando el tecolote canta, el indio. Muir, when the owl cries, sings, the Indian dies. The Popol Vuh, a Mayan religious text, describes owls as messengers of Zibalba, the Mayan, place of fright. The belief that owls are messengers and harbingers of the dark powers is also found among the Hakagara, Winnebago, of Wisconsin. When in earlier days the Hakagara committed the sin of killing enemies while they were within the sanctuary of the chief's lodge, an owl appeared and spoke to them in the voice of a human, saying, from now on, the Hakagara will have no luck. This marked the beginning of the decline of their tribe. An owl appeared to glory of the morning, the only female chief of the Hotsuk nation, and uttered her name. Soon after, she died. According to the culture of the Hopi, a Yuto aztec tribe, Taboos surround owls, which are associated with sorcery and other evils. The Ojibwe tribes, as well as their aboriginal Canadian counterparts, used an owl as a symbol for both evil and death. In addition, they used owls as a symbol of very high status of spiritual leaders of their spirituality. The Pawnee tribes viewed owls as the symbol of protection from any danger within their realms. 
The Puebloan peoples associated owls with Skeleton Man, the god of death and the spirit of fertility. The Yakima tribes use an owl as a totem, to guide where and how forests and natural resources are useful with management. Owls are birds from the order Strigiforms, which includes over 200 species of mostly solitary and nocturnal birds of prey typified by an upright stance, a large, broad head, binocular vision, binaural hearing, sharp talons, and feathers adapted for silent flight. Exceptions include the diurnal northern hawk owl and the gregarious burrowing owl. Owls hunt mostly small mammals, insects, and other birds, although a few species specialize in hunting fish. They are found in all regions of the earth except the polar ice caps and some remote islands. Owls are divided into two families. The true, or typical, owl family, Strigidae, and the barn owl family, Titonidae. A group of owls is called a, parliament. Recent phylogenetic studies place owls within the clade Telorus, most closely related to the Axipetromorphae and the Coraceomorphae, although the exact placement within Telorus is disputed. Cladogram of Telorov's relationships based on Braun and Kimball, 2021, some 220 to 225 extant species of owls are known, subdivided into two families. 1. True owls are typical owls family, Strigidae, and 2. Barn owls family, Titonidae. Some entirely extinct families have also been erected based on fossil remains. These differ much from modern owls in being less specialized or specialized in a very different way, such as the terrestrial Sophiornithidae. The Paleocene genera Beruornis and Ogygoptinx show that owls were already present as a distinct lineage some 60 minus 57 million years ago, Maya, hence, possibly also some 5 million years earlier, at the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs. This makes them one of the oldest known groups of non-Galonsere landbirds. The supposed Cretaceous owls, Bradypneme and Heptastiornis are apparently non-avialan manoraptors. During the Paleogene, the strigiforms radiated into ecological niches now mostly filled by other groups of birds. The owls as known today, though, evolved their characteristic morphology and adaptations during that time, too. By the early Neogene, the other lineages had been displaced by other bird orders, leaving only barn owls and typical owls. The latter at that time were usually a fairly generic type of probably earless owl similar to today's North American spotted owl or the European tawny owl. The diversity in size and ecology found in typical owls today developed only subsequently. Around the Paleogene-Neogene boundary, some 25 Maya, barn owls were the dominant group of owls in southern Europe and adjacent Asia at least. The distribution of fossil and present-day owl lineages indicates that their decline is contemporary with the evolution of the different major lineages of true owls, which for the most part seems to have taken place in Eurasia. In the Americas, Rather, an expansion of immigrant lineages of ancestral typical owls occurred. The supposed fossil herons, Ardia, Perplexa, Middle Miocene of Sansan, France, and Ardia, Lignitum, Late Pliocene of Germany, were more probably owls, the latter was apparently close to the modern genus Bubo. Judging from this, the Late Miocene remains from France described as Ardia, Orleansis should also be restudied. The Mesolasteridae, some of which were initially believed to be basal strigiforms, are now generally accepted to be diurnal birds of prey showing some convergent evolution toward owls. The taxa often united under strigogyphs were formerly placed in part with the owls, specifically the Sophiornithidae, they appear to be a Meganornithidae instead. For fossil species and paleosubspecies of extant taxa, see the genus and species articles. For a full list of extant and recently extinct owls, see the article list of owl species.